Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>Red will pick it up. The visible light is going to leave you, uh, you know, you'll miss out the low albedo ones. And here in infrared, well, they're usually all lit up. This is an amazing, um, I missed it. <laughs> it's just in the bottom frame. Uh, I believe it's a fireball. Could have seen that would have been amazing. We will catch it when we go out tonight or the next time I go out. But I uh, still wanted to show it to you. Caught it just in the bottom of the frame. Uh, there it is there, like a cloud, right? But in reality, it's a big fireball. And let me tell you that the size of this, um, I'm going to take a guess anywhere from four to six kilometers because the asteroid 4388 was that wide. And But now here's the thing. Is it close? Is it far? <laughs> we never know, right? Um, yeah, this is an airplane, guys. So when you're filming with infrared and an airplane goes by, an airplane always flashes. So these are not UFOs or fireballs. They're uh, airplanes flashing. Here's a close-up of a tumbling asteroid. So what's pretty cool is we're getting the, the ideal of the shapes of these objects. And uh, wow. This is, you know, an asteroid, guys, is, is a giant piece of metal. Think of it. Um, Rock-like mountainous piece of metal. Now here's a cool one. This is not my photo. This is an image of what is now believed to be the first meteor photographed on the planet from the planet Mars. The image was taken by the Mars rover Spirit. They say on March 7th, 2004, I'll have the link, um, direct source and attributions for this photo. Those who want to go see it for yourselves and see the information. It was taken with an exposure time of 15 seconds but look i'm not even interested with the meteor i'm interested with the clouds do you see the clouds that are over top of mars the mars rover has filmed clouds over the top of mars but they say it's due to gravity waves and not gravitational waves so I've been experimenting pretty much with the infrared camera in the past few weeks, but I had that definite problem with the batteries. Here in view, you're going to see three objects at the same time. There's one on the left, two on the right, and also on the right, one coming down just beside the one that just went up. Let's go see that really close up because I didn't get it chance the last time that I showed you guys this I want to show you guys how close these objects are going by now how many arc seconds I don't know and obviously they're not side by side but look at this see how close that is how close it looks either way well it looks pretty close let me tell you having one of those uh, two objects like that hit face to face can you imagine the explosion that would give out you know so 
that could be some of the explosions that we are seeing a lot further out. And this mysterious light, the same night that I caught asteroid Jurgenstock 4388, what the heck is this? They all appeared in one flash at the same time. Looks like uh, several objects, maybe slivers flying by. This was really 45 seconds to about a minute and 10 seconds just before Jurgenstock right here went by. Really happy I was able to get a chance to catch uh, Jurgenstock. And it's amazing. It was like a dream and it really got me hyped up because I was filming it all day. I must have filmed it for five hours. It cost $30 of batteries. And so yeah, hey guys, th uh, four hours of filming, the, um, filming like this um, cost me $20 to film for four hours. This is another NASA photo, guys. This is not mine. Of the sun. And wow, this is the transit of Phobos, one of Mars' moons. It's in transit across the sun as seen from Mars by the MAR Opportunity on March 10th, 2004. Is it big enough for you? Just to give you an idea how big Phobos is. Sorry if you guys hear a fan or something outside of some construction or something going on. This is Elijah Matthews' own work. Just to give you guys an idea, this is a beautiful photo, by the way. The sun in the back and Mercury transiting the sun. This is an image of Jupiter with NASA's Hubble Space Telescope that took it. Planetary camera. Eight impact sites are visible. The brown spots that you see there on Jupiter. Good news, guys. I went to buy a battery charger. So it even has an alarm on it to tell me when it's halfway through, which it is right now. Four hours to charge, it says, but it's a good charger. It cost me $30, tax included in Canadian currency. And I paid an extra $20 to get four more batteries that I'll show you right here that will complete the kit. So I'll be able to film for a couple hours. So this cost an extra $15 tax uh, without tax, so 20 bucks to get four more. So I can have two sets of three hours to be able to film. That should be good. They're expensive machines, but beautiful little devices and they work very, very well. This is infrared and again, it has night vision. I have yet to get thermal. It can record, um, it can record audio also at the same time. There's a TV outlet, there's a mini port outlet. You could take the pictures or the video. You see the button there, excuse me. And you have that little uh, disc that goes in there and you can stick it out in a larger SD card to transfer everything really easily into your computer. So I could film this on a very large monitor maybe and adjust it like in the future, maybe for live streams and stuff like that. At one point, maybe in a couple of months, I will be able to be set up and do all this live for you guys. I know it's an interest. That's where the batteries go. Just simply four A double A batteries. And I'm telling you guys, buy the rechargeables. It'll cost too much. I just want to thank all of you for following the research and for taking the time to subscribe to this channel.